Hey ladies and gents, this is Linda Fachik777 and today I'm coming at you with a long-awaited technique video. I have had some requests. Um, I put the question out there whether people wanted a tutorial on it, but how to do a transfer technique onto canvas. So I'm going to share that with you today. Finally, um, I've also in the past done quite a few um, videos on different texture techniques that I've come across that I've used on projects. Um, and the two that I find I use the most is acrylic paint mixed with sand which is pretty basic. It's sand mixed into acrylic paint, but I get a lot of uh, messages wanting to know how much sand to mix in with the paint, which, you know, I don't mind answering those, not a problem at all, but I want to go ahead and show you that on video. And then a lot of my projects, I do texturing with gesso, and I kind of explain it to you when I'm showing you a project, but in this video, I'm going to show it to you okay so I'm gonna move my sign out of the way now the first thing I want to show you a while back I watched it's not a technique or anything it's just an aha moment I watched a video from P who is whimsical endeavors here on YouTube and she was showing an organizing system to organize flowers that she had learned from Laura from the Robin Laura who's here on YouTube and what essentially they had started with was uh, Laura had found this big big um, storage box filled with these smaller little snap shut acrylic boxes. I think it's to store photos, basically. And she got this, it's, you know, with a coupon and ended up paying like $20 for it. And I think she probably got about 10, maybe um, 14 small boxes. Um, and then I just watched a video from her recently when she had shared she went to go back and get more and they were of course out But they had bigger sizes, but you had to buy the boxes separately and they were like $2.99 a piece But they were 40% off and I'm sitting here trying to figure out a way to do this I have a large storage tote full of flowers, but I have um, a drawer full of flowers that are stuffed in plastic bags, you know, that I get into like most often all the time, certain colors. And so I wanted to organize them as Laura and P had done, but my Michaels is like an hour away or Joann's. I think they got it at Joann's, pardon me. It's like an hour away and I went on Joann's.com to try and find it, couldn't find it. And so I'm racking my brain and it finally dawned on me and I was like, aha. So I found these at Walmart's. Our local Fred Meyer because of course now that I was looking for them I went to Walmart and they had like two and then I go to our local Fred Meyer and it had like three and then I go to our local Dollar Tree and I swear like a week ago I had walked past and there was like freaking 30 of them there and now they had one but anyway so I'll you know keep plugging along and getting them but um, same system storage boxes kind of like the big size Laura recently found. So let's move on with it. So I found bum, ba, da, dum, a pencil box. Holy Toledo Batman. Why I never thought of this sooner. Perfect. And it is about a five by eight size, which is about the big size Laura talked about. And I was trying to read the label on her box. I think it was somewhere under two inches in the tallness of it and this is about two and a half inches and as you can see i mean it snaps shut it's a pencil box you can see through it so i know what colors are in there and there is over i'd say one inch flowers about a hundred of these wild orchid craft flowers that fit in this box awesome and i don't have to drive an hour to get them and of course they stack up perfectly wonderful inside a drawer i've got ones for my white flowers my pink flowers my you know black and red flowers my brown flowers etc etc 97 cents a box and they're just you know this from walmart was the sterilite brand you know um our local fred meyer store here on the west coast you know it was 99 cents a box dollar tree obviously a dollar um yeah, they're all different colors, but I don't mind. I can still see through them all just like this. Perfectly wonderful, 97 cents. And there you have it. Thank you, Laura and P, for sharing your um, ideas. I love it. I found a ah, closer to home alternative. Okay, wonderful. Anyway, so let's get down to some techniques. What I want to show you is putting... Um, 
putting jet or putting transfer technique on a canvas. I had done a few canvases where I had transferred paper onto the canvas and as you rub off the top layer of the paper it revealed the underside layer of course and it looked like you'd almost whitewash the paper onto the canvas versus just gluing it on okay it looked real worn and kind of shabby and vintage so I've got one here that I already started and um, so we'll get to that in a minute so I want to use the other half of the board this is just a little plain canvas board I've used the 3d boards when I do it but this is what I had at hand to show you okay so I'm gonna move my camera down this way and down a little bit more so what you'll need um, you can use single-sided paper double-sided paper doesn't matter I like the double-sided um, it works a little bit easier this is like um, uh, what paper did I go oh this is a Teresa Collins paper it's kind of a thicker paper and I find that sometimes the thicker paper works better but you can use just even something you've printed off your printer on normal copier paper it all works the same okay so I've got double-sided paper here and then you're also going to need where'd I put it where'd I put it hello I set it here right in view Oh, oh, here it is. <laughs> it's behind some paper. You're going to also need some multi-medium. Okay, this is just a gloss. I'd like to get some matte, but, you know, for this purpose, you don't really notice it because you're using it as a glue. If I was gluing over the top, I, you know, um, wouldn't like it. But it's a gloss for gluing where it's perfect. Okay, so what you're going to do, and... Um, I, when I do canvas, I will often, you know, I'll do the front, I'll go over the sides, everything. And what I wanted to show you just real quick, when I go over the sides, I kind of crease this already. I don't make any special cuts or anything like that. When I go to transfer it, I just basically transfer it down the sides like this and I'll and I'll glue it on the sides and everything and I'll show you that and I either just pinch it when I comes to a corner or I'll cut like a little slit in it. And for this purpose, um, I'll show you how I cut the slit. Okay, so let me get down even closer. I want you to see really well. Um, I've seen a lot of videos where it says use a little, where it says be generous with it. I like to be generous with it. It works a lot better. Okay, so I use a foam brush. Okay, and you can either put it on your canvas or on your paper. If you're working with, um, you know, just a little small piece, put it on your paper. Sometimes I put it on both. It really doesn't matter. But for this technique, I'm going to show putting it on both so you can see it. I dip it in and um, you can see there's quite a bit on my brush and I paint it on like really, really, I mean, it's, see, it's like, see how thick, I mean like really thick. I don't do it paper thin because it dries too quick. Okay. I like it thick, so I know it'll stick, because it's kind of like Mod Podge. You ever do Mod Podge and it starts bubbling and you don't get it underneath the paper very well when you're sealing, and so it doesn't stick to the, the bottom very well and you get a great big bubble? That's what this does. You want to make sure it's really well covered and you want, it, want a lot on it, okay? if you Same thing, if you want to put it on the canvas versus that, you just put it on the canvas nice and thick. See how thick it's going on? And when I go over the sides, I do the same thing, just right along on the sides, nice and thick. I don't care if it spills out around the edges. No worries. See how nice and thick that is? Okay, you want a nice thick layer. You want to make sure this sucker is down and no bubbles. Because if you bubble and you go to try after it's dried to take um, the top layer off, then you have this big hole on your canvas. And I've done it, but I make it work. I just call it vintage. <laughs> so then what I do is I put it down onto the paper or onto the canvas to put the paper down onto the canvas. Spread it out really well. You're going to see, let me go down a little bit, zoom in a little bit. You're going to see as I put it on there, I mean, stuff is squishing out along the edges. Okay. I don't mind that. It doesn't matter. And when I come along the sides, I just wrap it around on the sides, smush it down, wrap it really good. And that's why you want it really a lot on there too, okay? So you can get the sides really well. If it helps, sometimes I've done it, I'll just put on the front and then I'll cut strips for the side. And then I'll make like a little slit right here in the corner like that to help, you know, put it down on the edges, okay? And just keep pressing it down. You want to make sure it's down real securely. 
I don't mind if it's not all the way, you know, to the edge or something like that. I'm going to bring this back up a little bit so I'm in view. Um, just so it's down, okay? And then what I do is I've got this. You can use like a brayer or you can use, you know, your hands really good. You just want to make sure you get all the bubbles out. I've got this cute little thing I got at a garage sale. And I just run it through on top and smooth it out and make sure I have got it securely down on that paper. Now, if you're going to want to start this project, you have to have a little bit of patience and you want to start it the night before you want to start it, okay? Because this has to dry and cure at least a good 24 hours before you start your process. You see how if you roll it down or a ruler even works, gets it all nice and flat and basically seals to the canvas, okay? See how it seals all nice to the canvas. And I do that, and then I'll let it sit for, you know, a minute or two, and then I'll come back and kind of rub it again and call it good. Okay, but I just want to make sure all the bubbles are out, and it's firmly going to secure to the canvas. And especially the sides. You might have to work the sides a little bit, hold it down a little bit. If you find it's not, you like, it didn't seem like it's sticking that well, you might have got too thin of a layer. You want it, remember, you can see it there, kind of that real nice thick blob. Okay, not blob, but you want it thick, okay? So that's how you start the process. And then you put it aside for a night and go work on something else, okay? Then the next day when you come back, you've got this nice glued down process, okay? I didn't put anything over the top. You want to leave that, okay? All right, so let me adjust my camera a little bit more. Now we're going to start the process of the transfer method. Basically, when we used that uh, multimedium, Okay, it's sealing it down underneath. Okay, I still want to get this to stick really well so I can show you guys. Now, yeah, now you can see how the sides are starting to um, stay stuck. So you might have to work it a little bit. Make sure all your bubbles are out. Okay, and the reason I just cut this, because that doesn't matter to me. I don't care if the corner's got paper on it, because, you know, you might want to ink it up or texture it up around the edges or something like that. Okay, um... And so that, it's already starting the transfer process by gluing. The multimedium does the transferring for you. So basically, now we're going to start to peel off the top layers of the paper, okay? I You can use a paper towel or whatever. I just buy these El Cheapy, um, and it doesn't even have to have this on. It's just what I had at hand, but just a cheapy sponge, like from Dollar Tree. And I like, let me get some, um, I've got some paper down here. Where'd I put it? Oh, over here. Because I it gets a pretty wet process. Okay? Um, I've got paper underneath, but I've got paper down here, too. I like to take my sponge and wet it really good to start off with. You're going to kind of be... Some people say, you know, careful, don't get it too wet. Um, you know, this kind of does it just right. Nice and soppy. Okay? And you're going to start to wet the top layer of this paper okay and this is where it takes a little bit you want that top layer to get nice and soaked so you, so you can basically start peeling off the the top layers of the fiber so that you're left below with that little um you know print that you've got on that's you know transferred onto the canvas you'll start to know when it's ready there it is see it's already ready so let me bring it in a little bit okay it's already ready and i just kind of keep wetting and keep rubbing. It's, I use the same paper as the other sides. You can see. Can you see how you're starting to see that that uh, print underneath? I see. I had a piece of paper. This is what we're going for. This is what's underneath. Okay. So you see how you start. You just start kind of using your finger. Um, you know, when you very first start this process, just to get used to it and to see how long it takes, you might want to start with like a small canvas, like a 6x6 six six or something. If you do like an 8x10 canvas or something like that, which I have done, and it takes you hours to set and peel this off. And I find that this double stick, uh, or double stick, this, uh, cardstock kind of thick cardstock paper it peels off the easiest although you can use any other papers you want see how i'm peeling that and it's you're starting to see the layers underneath see that and you may have to go back in you know re-wetting several it's going to get soggy re-wetting several times okay 
getting all the layers off. And what I usually do is, and this one, like I said, it works really fast. And also the thicker that you put this multi-medium on, um, the better it adheres, I find, and the easier for some reason it is to remove the process um, of the paper. If it's thinner, then this doesn't stick down as well, um, like I said before, and it peels up more, um, and you can't, you almost have to take this off in teeny tiny little chunks. You can't roll it off as big as I'm rolling here. And if you want to just wet your fingers, come back in, dip if you're tired of using the sponge. And then you often can't see when you're doing this, it feels like, you know, you've got all the layers off, but not necessarily so. So I'm going to show you um, something else I've come up with. Because one time I was just having a whole lot of trouble um, trying to get all the layers off, and it was a thinner piece of paper. It was one-sided. It did work, but it was kind of a pain in my uh, behind. And um, But I got it to work, and it was pretty, and it looked all vintage -y. So... You can see all the different paper, let's see the fibers coming off the paper. So what I'll do, which I'm going to show you now, so I can see where I need to maybe get more layers off. Okay, I will take my heat gun, pardon the noise, and I will heat it, okay? And it'll start to turn like a milky color where there's some layers of paper that I have not yet rubbed off very well. And also the reason I like to dry it a little bit first is because I'm getting impatient. I want this fiber off so I can start my project. So I will wet it a little bit. Okay, that's enough there I think. Now, do you, can you see where it's like right in here it's turned kind of milky? A milky color? Let me go a little bit more because it's probably hard to see on uh, camera. It'll get a little bit more milky color for us. That just shows me where there's more fibers that are that need to be rubbed off. And you may get some papers that it keeps turning that milky color even though you can feel that you've got all the fibers off. But like I said, you're getting impatient and you want to start your project so you want to get all the wetness gone and you're trying to dry it. Um, and you just can't see, see how it looks milky there. You can't see the script very good. You know you've rubbed it off. You know it's smooth, but it still turns milky. Um, it's just the quality of paper you're using. So what I'll do is I'll come in here. That shows me where I need to rub off more paper fibers. And as you can see, there are more paper fibers I am rubbing off. Okay. If I go to dry it again and it's still milky... Because of the quality of paper I used, it feels smooth. I've used my sponge. I've got off all those extra fibers. That sucker feels smooth city, but it's still milky when I go to dry it because I want to get started on my project, like I've said. So I will dry it. Let's say, let's say this is a, you know, a cheaper quality paper. I've dried it. It looks totally milky and I know it's smooth. I've got all the paper layers off. So what I'll do, let me make sure I've got it. The layers all off. I will take a really kind of damp sponge. Okay. And I will slightly wet it. I know we were trying to get it dry to get started on it, but I will slightly wet it. Okay. To get rid of that milky appearance. And then I come in with my Maj Paj mat, okay? It's slightly wet. I don't use the multimedium because that stuff's a little more expensive. I come in with my Maj Paj mat, my paper's slightly wet, and I will come over and just, I use a mat so it's not shiny, and I will just Maj Paj right over it. And when it's wet and you Maj Paj over it, it stays that wet color. You don't get that milky dry appearance, okay? And then I will dry it with the heat gun. Yes, I've got a well-used, beautiful heat gun here. Number one, it seals in your paper. And especially if you've used a cheaper paper and you find you've gotten, um, when you're rubbing 
some of this off. Sometimes a chunk will come off with it. I don't mind that because it adds to the worn of the, you know, the shabby chicness of it. I don't mind if, if some of it comes off and you actually see exposed canvas, okay? When that happens, great to use Mod Podge. That way it'll seal over it and no more of that paper will tear off. But see, now it still looks perfectly wonderful. There's none of that milky appearance left on there. And the Mod Podge just sealed it right in and it's nice, okay? Now, I'm going to show you with this one because I want you to see a little better. Can you see how milky that is? That's what I was trying to show you, okay? So here I would wet it again. I would rub more fibers off, okay? But let's try not rubbing more fibers off, getting kind of that wet appearance, that milky. Let's wet the milky. You're tired of rubbing. You're sick of this. It's taking too long. You're never going to do it again. Maybe rub a few fibers off, and you can rub off with your sponge too, not a problem. But just make sure you have all your fibers off. Okay. Okay, and then I'm going to go in with my Mod Podge. I didn't get it really overly wet, just enough to kind of wet down those milky areas. Go in with the Mod Podge. I did this by pure accident. I'm like, okay, how can I get it to look all shiny again? I'm sick of rubbing. That white's not going to come off. I'm ready to go. And it just does that when paper dries. It's just going to do that. It's going to get that milky appearance. Appearance is just part of the process. Okay, look at milky appearance, gone. Maj Paj, a little over damp surface, done. But I, I will say this, you're going to wipe off your first layer. I would dry it at least once. I'd wipe off again, kind of get rid of all the milky layers that you see, and then dry it again. If it still looks really milky, but it's smooth, you can't feel any fibers, then I would slightly dampen it and then go over it with Maj Paj and dry it, okay? There is your transfer process. Okay, on to Canvas. So if you have any questions, let me know, and I hope I explain this good enough for you, all right? Okay, I'm going to move my camera up, and we're going to go on to um, a couple of texture techniques, all right? Get this wet stuff out of the way. It becomes a big mess with um, <laughs> all those rubbed-off paper fibers. Expect that, a nice big mess. Okay, so let me move some of this out of the way for you, and I'm going to show you the measurements I used mixing acrylic paint with sand. Very easy, okay? But I know there's people that have asked. So I buy these bowls at Dollar Tree. They're in the little kids section. They're like five for a dollar. I like them because, it's a, as you can hear that, it's a nice snap-tight lid. In the kids like eating, you know, where the spoons and bowls and stuff are. The five for a dollar at the Dollar Tree. Nice snap tight lids. The paint doesn't dry up. Also, um, just an FYI, go out a little bit with my camera. Cheap paint plates. Also at Dollar Tree. It's two for a dollar. These cute little um, kids plates, but they are really slick. And so if you let your paint dry on it, <laughs> like I often do, um, you can go in here and it should, if you put hot water on it, it's going to come right up. But this is dried paint for I bet a month, okay? Just peels right off. Nice. See that? But if you run hot water on it, it'll really come off. But I've bought some stuff at like, you know, the normal little paint uh, plates and stuff like that, artist paint and... Sometimes it's hard to get like gesso and stuff off of it. These are awesome because of the slick surface. So these come again at Dollar Tree, two for a dollar, and you have three little paint sections. Nice, cheap, affordable one to show that to you. Okay, so mixing paint with sand. As the paint sits, you know, a month from now, it tends to get thicker. If you want to thin it out, you can add more paint, okay? But this is why I like a nice snap tight bowl because that way it won't dry out from the air, okay? 
it's usually um, two fluid ounces, just a bottle of paint, to about a third of a cup of sand. I will mix a little bit more paint, okay? Usually I will take, because I don't want plain white, and I don't want, I also buy um, vintage white. Vintage white is a little bit yellowy to me, so I will usually take plain white. I'm just going to mix a batch up for you right now to show you. Okay. And I mean, these are what, like 57 cents or something, so I don't worry about, you know, I'll sit and squeeze out as much as I can, but I don't get every last penny. Okay, so I'll mix one of that. Let me get my little, here they are, mixy sticks. Okay, I work at a dentist's office. We have a uh, privy to lots of tongue depressors. <laughs> okay, so usually one of that. And then I'll probably mix about maybe a quarter paint of this. I better shake that up a little bit. I'm going to do it off camera. About a quarter of this to get the color I want. But normally, um, one jar of this to about a quarter cup. And if you take a jar of two ounce paint and mix it with about another quarter of this, then you want about a third a cup of sand, okay? And so I'll, you know, put about that much more into it. It's probably about a quarter to a half. Okay, mix it up and make sure it's the brightness I want. I don't want it too yellowy. And that just gives it just enough. So I'm going to say you're probably using about three fluid ounces of paint, okay? Like I said, if you just want to mix one jar, then I would go in with a quarter cup of sand. But, you know, a jar and a half, I'd probably go a third of a cup, okay? And that is a good color I want. It's still kind of white with just a touch of a cream to it. And then I buy sand. I bought two kinds of sand. I bought sand at the Dollar Tree, but it's a very thick coarse sand which comes out like this i'm going to show you because i just happen to be working on a project i'll just show you the tip of it in the mirror it's very very coarse and so you'll get like really coarse like this see how coarse that is some places will just almost come out paint and some places will come out very coarse coarse sand but i don't mind that effect okay but um, and that's Dollar Tree sand just because of the cheapness of the sand. If you get this sand at like Walmart or um, Joann's or Michael's, it's a very fine grain sand, okay? So I'm going to start with a quarter cup here. All right, and you can see it's a very fine, fine grain sand. And I'm just going to pour it in. I know it looks like a lot. Let's see what we go. Always start out with about a quarter cup, but usually I add about enough to make a third of a cup. Depends how thick I want it. The thicker it is now, it thickens up later, like I said. Okay? And that looks pretty thick now, but I'm going to add a little more because it's still, see how it's just kind of soupy looking? That's really um, kind of hard when you want to add texture to the tops of your flowers and stuff. So I will go in with just about another, maybe about another half. So when I measure that out, it's about a third of a cup. Let's try a little bit, half of that half first and see where we're at. And usually when I'm done, it fills this container, okay? Let's see how thick we are. That's looking pretty good. That might be where I want it, and that's darn close to a third of a cup, okay? Mix it up really good. That's looking pretty good. We'll just go ahead and add the rest, so about a third of a cup. Let's see if that's where I usually do it. And that works great, you know, for putting, you know, your painting, just like I showed you there on wood products and stuff. Yeah, that's nice. Look how that's nice and thick. So about a third of a cup to three ounces of paint, or if you only use one bottle of paint, you only want about a fourth of a cup. Okay, and then to put texture on top of flowers and stuff, these cute little pouncy brushes. I tend to use the small one, but this is the medium one. It's like a purple, but I tend to use the small one the best, okay? Because it adds nice texture onto some flowers, and I will show you. So I've got a little flower here. 
dip it in. I just kind of dip it in there. See, just a little dip. And I'll add texture. I know it's white on white. That, but I've had, that's what I had because I showed you those containers. <laughs> but see the texture on top of the flower? Okay, perfect. I put it on, you know, on my flowers, on, you know, all my embellishments, my metals. I've got some metal right here. Let me show you a little lock. A little lock. And it, that's what kind of always adds my little powdery, soft texture on my metals. Okay, onto papers. Look, we dried this all up. Let's get our canvas back. Let's put it on. And I pounce it on when I want to put it on edges of papers and see how it gives me that powder softness. That's what I do, okay, with the texture paint mixed with sand. Looks nice on canvas even. You can thicken it up if you want. Add some texture along on your canvas, okay? And then you can take your heat tool to dry it. Works perfectly great. Okay, so there it is. There is my paint mixed with sand. Okay, and I'm going to get a napkin. I'm going to wipe off this excess on the lid here. And that paint's going to last me a good long time. And then I'm going to snap on this lid. Remember Dollar Tree or close to it? Snaps on nice, and I've got a nice jar of acrylic paint mixed with sand. Okay, now last technique. I'm going to show you. I've got a wood heart here. Um, go in a little closer. How I do my um, gesso texture, okay? And I just use this Liquitex gesso. It's a little bit thicker. Not as thick as thick gesso, but thicker. I'm going to put some in my handy dandy cool uh, Dollar Tree paint plate. Can't believe I said that like that. Came out without jumbled up. And then I use, okay, foam brush. Want to have your heat gun ready? Because I often tell you how I do it and then I heat set it between. So what I do, sometimes it doesn't matter. I may go off right at first and just kind of paint the first layer. Not a big deal. Just kind of get a layer of gesso on there, you know, and then I'll heat set it. We're almost done. I know this is a long video, but, you know, been asked a lot about these. Okay, so it's heat sets. Yep, perfect. Because that's, for, and then I'll get gesso on here. And then I will start, let me get it in a way you can, there, that might work. And I just start pouncing it on at first. Okay, actually is how I start it. First layer, paint it on. Or you can pounce the first layer on it. doesn't matter. But I just go up and down, pouncing. Okay. Now, see how I've got a texture there? All right, I'm gonna come in and heat set it. And with gesso, as with paint, if you heat set it, you get to kind of your last layer, the longer you heat set it, it will even bubble a little bit too. And I'm sure a lot of you know that. Set that down, because I'm kind of burning my finger. Okay, so we have our first layer. All right, and I will usually do three or four layers. And I like this because it comes out to be a really fine, fine texture versus the acrylic paint mixed with sand. Okay, again, just doing the pouncing motion. Sometimes I'll go in really thick with it. You can go in with the thick on your brush. Doesn't matter how thick you get it on there because you can move that gesso around and pounce it. Okay. You know, and go to the side, um, get to a clean part of your brush to help kind of texture it a little bit more. See how textured that looks? And then a lot of times I may go in and do just one more layer, but for the sake of the time of the video, usually I'll go in, so that's third layer. Yeah, I'll go in and do, because the first layer was just painting it, I'll go in and do a fourth layer. But if you start holding this on there, see how it's starting to actually bubble up a little bit? The gesso's bubbling. Okay, that's going to give you some texture. Okay, so like I said, I'll usually go into one more layer, but there is a really fine, fine texture. Okay, and that's how I get my gesso texture that I talk about a lot. But yeah, like I said, a lot of times I'll go in and just do one more layer, especially if you're like trying to cover up metal or something. Sometimes you need to go in and do that other uh layer and i've done it on metal and uh one of my upcoming design team projects i'll sh i'll show you you know how i did this 
texture right on metal, okay? Go in, fourth layer usually is about perfect for me. You see how it's bubbling up already? And the texture, just because you're heating it, you don't have to heat it to bubble it. it as you can see, it over here, I didn't um, hold the heat on it and see it does a nice fine texture. But sometimes if you just want fun, like little bubbles in it, you can heat it a little bit longer and just get some, you know, bigger bubbles on there. But anyway, that is texturing with gesso. Okay, so I think I've got all my little techniques down. If you have any questions, please uh, leave a comment or message me. I'll help you the best I can. I hope I explain this very well. Um, like I always say, thanks for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.